Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm John, you're watching Rude Reality, and today we're gonna dive into GIMP and do some thumbnail creation. I've been asked by a few people to show how I create my YouTube thumbnails, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start with a blank canvas, so to speak, and then I'll show you all the tips and tricks that I know to get the beautiful thumbnails you've come to love out of Rude Reality. So let's dive right in. All right, here we are with our image. You can see my bike is a little dark, but this looks pretty good. We wanna bump up that saturation, get those colors in there. So we'll right click on our layer and we'll say duplicate layer. And then you see there's a lot of options under mode here. You can click on this drop down here and I like screen or overlay. Typically I go with overlay because it adds the saturation in, but it really darkens up the bike a lot. Nah, not too keen on that. So for this one, I think I'll choose screen, which really brightens things up quite a bit, doesn't it? So what we can do is we could take our lasso and select the bike and my helmet. You don't have to be exact on this because we're gonna feather it in a second anyway. We'll go up select, feather, 25 pixels is good. Hit that, and then what we can do is invert that selection, the select menu, invert, and that'll select all of this, and since this layer is selected, when I hit delete, ta-da! Now, what we have, if I do a select none, is we have the regular image, but our, our bike is a little bit bright, and it's got this neat pop-out overlay effect, uh, which I will show in a minute, but the it kept the blue in my helmet, which is important. If you just want to do the sky and everything, we'll undo our select none, and then we can duplicate this layer again, drag it up top, it's dark again, but we can do a select invert and hit delete on that layer and change this to screen or overlay, there you go, and then we'll drop the opacity down to about 37%, and now if I hide this layer using the eye icon, you can see this is what our original image looked like. And this one bumps the saturation up, this third layer. See, it bumps the saturation up, makes it look uh, a little more appealing. But our bike is real dark. But when we show this middle layer, now the dash on my bike is plainly visible. And I think it looks pretty good. And you can choose not to feather this uh, selection if you want a cleaner edge or if you, uh, if you don't want this pop out ghosting effect. I kind of like it. It adds a little something, but now it's time to move on. We'll go up to layer, we'll hit new layer, we'll choose outline, whatever, it doesn't matter what the name is. And then we're gonna draw a border around it. So typically um, I have a border around here. You, you can use it, not use it. If you took a screenshot, for instance, or a screen grab of a, of a video uh, that you produced, you might wanna get rid of the border. So we'll go ahead and do that here. We'll make sure we do a select none, nothing selected. We're on our outline layer. And then we'll choose our pencil and we'll choose uh, size 78 or so. There we go. And we'll make sure black is selected or you can choose a color. For this one, let's do a, uh, let's do a dark red, why not? So we'll click right around here on the corner and I'm holding control and shift, which keeps the, uh, keeps the line straight, which is nice. And I go down to this corner, boop, over to that corner, boop, up to that corner, boop, and then over to that corner. And now we've got an attractive outline. And if you want to get real tricky with it, you can put this outline layer in between some of the others, and then you'll have things coming outside the border. You can even mask off these areas with your lasso select like we did with the bike earlier and delete those from your outline layer and that'll give you a uh, that'll give you kind of a pop out effect which is pretty neat. So now we have an outline we need some text so we're gonna change this back to black and we're gonna choose white as our foreground and when we click here we can say GIMP tutorial and I pick a standard font and size it's italic, we wanna bump that up to about 200. But remember, you're building a thumbnail for YouTube, so it's gonna be pretty small, and you wanna make sure that your text stands out. So right there, we have GIMP tutorial, that's fine. And then we'll add another layer, call it outline again, that's fine, doesn't really matter. Make sure that you drag this new layer 
right beneath your text layer and then click on your text layer, come up here to layer, text to path, select from path, select, grow, 20 is good, I like 20. And then you wanna make sure bucket fill is selected. We'll click these little arrow guys to swap our foreground and background. You can use whatever color you want. So I will go to outline one and then click with my left mouse button, boop. We drop black color in there. All looks great. Make sure you do this next thing. Select none and then go to filters, lights and shadow, drop shadow. All you have to do is bump the opacity up to about 9.5 to one, hit okay. Now you've got a nice drop shadow, look at that. So now we're pretty much done with the with this thumbnail. You wanna leave about this corner free of anything important because YouTube will block that with your uh, time code for how long your video is. So this is a basic thumbnail. So let's go look at some of the other examples of things I've done. Um, in here, you can see I drew a real wobbly outline on this one. This one didn't have dual layers or triple layers but I used it with the select feather that I showed you earlier to get a decent pop out effect. And in this case, I colored in the text for a real good example of popping out and changing the color. Um, we, I'll, I'll show you this one that just came out recently. So I have this text and then I put an outline layer above it. If I drop that off, you can see that not only do I have the black outline, but I also have this gradient in there. And to do that, all you need to do is click on your text layer and then click on your, hold down your mouse button rather on the bucket fill, choose gradient and you can come down here and select custom or foreground to background. You wanna make sure that you get the smooth one which is HSV and I'll change this red and we'll pick uh, yellow. So we'll go red to yellow. And now with our colors selected, nothing over here is selected. Click on your text layer and then do layer text to path, select from path. And now you'll see that all of our text characters are selected. And now with this selection and our gradient setup, we can go to our outline, drag, drop, and it's doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Now we can apply the different gradients. So if I choose custom, it's my two custom colors here and you can go in and play with them from, you know, this one's this one's gonna be a little bit harder. That's just a two color. This one will be softer. This one will go to transparent, uh, but I like custom. And that just gives you the two colors. And for up here, like I said, I have my outline layer, which is right here. So I, this was a screen grab off of a video that I made. So I wanted to hide that, so I added my outline layer, but I had masked off my body here, and when I hit delete, boop, it made that disappear. So that worked out real well. And then on this one, I applied a focus blur. So if you go filters, blur, focus blur, it allows you to select a sharp area, which you can enlarge, and then how gradually you want it to get blurry. Easy enough to do. And you can see there's quite a few layers here like this cicada and the background image itself. And I used that twice to bump up the saturation. And then on something like this, I added my text and, my, and no outline, but I did add text and its outline. And in the outline for this, I added a lens flare because the sun in the original image is right there. So to sort of match that, in my outline layer, you can see the lens flare, and that's just filter, light and shadow, lens flare. And then it lets you move it left and right and change its, uh, change its opacity and size. So you choose what you like, and then when you apply it, it looks like the, it looks like the sunlight is coming through that. So that's pretty neat. In something like this mail call video, I uh, did a select around my hand and I actually pasted it right there. So this pasted layer, if we only show that, you can see that here's my hand and I just basically cut out most of myself, but I put it above the mail call text so that it kind of looks like my hand is coming through the screen. And then when you add the outline to it, it really sells that effect. And then we just have our regular background image, Dewey rides his logo, and that's that. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, boop the old like button and consider leaving your old buddy John a subscription. And if you have something else you'd wanna see in GIMP or DaVinci Resolve, uh, leave me a comment below. 
And don't forget to share this video with your friends. Maybe they'll find it useful too. Till I see you again, keep the shiny side up. Ta-da!